It looks like a dinosaur tail. I almost want to just like pick it up like a ribbon gnaw on it. It's eight o'clock in the morning. The first restaurant I'm going to is one of the most popular restaurants in the city. And it's the favorite restaurant of the president of the Philippines. And I'm going now because I heard it gets packed. I don't think that traffic light is actually working. Sana's original Kabawan. I knew I smelled something good as soon as I, I ran at a corner onto the street. And this place is known for a couple of things. It's known for tapa, which is shredded beef. They're also known for their bualo, which is something I absolutely missed since the last time I was here. Everything looks just, oh my God, it looks so good. I haven't had breakfast yet. This is gonna be so incredibly exciting for me. Tapa is a dried shredded uh, meat dish, usually cured and spiced. It kind of reminds me of Chinese pork floss almost. So incredibly light. Squeeze some calamansi juice on it. Whoa, doesn't need my shimmery, but it's loaded down with flavor. No wonder they give you a serving of rice to eat with it. Mm. Oh, actually, that goes better with rice. It's airy, savory, beefy. Add a little calamansi to bring out even more that nice beefy flavor. Some bits are crunchy, some bits are chewy, but there is some magical quality to this. I don't know what it is. It's one of those dishes that the more you eat, the more you want to eat it. And this dish is like the soulmate to the rice. I think my favorite is towards the end as you've been chewing it for a little bit. All the different ingredients are still morphed together into this crazy umami-esque flavor that makes this the borderline crack of the food world. Oh, chili stew. That is a spicy chili. For me, that kind of kills off that fragrant beef flavor a little bit. I don't say this often, but maybe don't add chili in this. The other thing I got that's really popular here is the bualo. Last time I had bualo, it blew my mind. And really, I've been thinking about this dish ever since. Just look at crazy chunks of beef in this puppy. Here, let's treat it well. A little, little sauna for our beef. Oh, I love that big old chunk of bone in here. And look at the mural. Hang on, I gotta savor this moment right here. This is one of my favorite Filipino dishes. For all you beef lovers out there, this is for you. The broth itself, it tastes light, but there is a good amount of fat in here. Add a little calamansi as well. Pop a couple of chilies in there. Take a piece with some chilies. I feel like every spoonful of, of the soup I'm eating has an oversized piece of meat on it. Happy Saturday to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. This broth is even better now with the citrus flavor and the spice from the chilies. It basically keeps this dish interesting and keeps it from being a little too much. Oh, one thing I wanted to do. Take this piece with a nice marrow, pop that marrow out. Just get that all mixed in with the rice and the tapa. That pure, silky, smooth texture with the crunch and chewiness of the shredded beef. That was a legendary bite. I can't believe this is, this is one piece of beef. It's bigger than my bowl. This is not even bony here, this is all meat. Hi, thank you so much. Let me just refill my soup for me. I got like way more meat than soup, which is always my dream in any restaurant. But the soup is so darn good. Oh yeah, what a great breakfast. By the way, it's like eight o'clock in the morning right now. And I just pretty much ate a cow. This is how I love to start my day. That was such a delicious meal. And the craziest thing, that massive bowl of beef soup, the tapa dish, two orders of rice, that could easily feed, I think two or even maybe three people, $5. Why aren't I living here? All right, lunchtime. I am at Rack's Garden Bar and Grill. I'm here because th there's a couple things I wanted to try. One is a, a, a seafood tower. Every time I hear the word seafood and tower, I feel like I gotta get it. And I hear their bulalo here is amazing as well. And since I can't get enough of that beef soup, I'm gonna have it again. Oh, check this out. This is so pretty. This is their version of the bulalo. It caught my attention because of the bone marrow that's in here. Look at this thing. And of course, some corn. 
large chunks of beef. Oh, ho -ho. oh, look at this massive seafood tower. So this is my surf and turf meal of the day. Oh man, this soup, look at this. This thing's got a ton of fat in here. It's already forming a gel on the surface. I love bone marrow on basically anything. Put that in this already pretty fatty soup. This is a really flavorful and very fatty bulalo. I almost have to chew this broth, it's so thick. But well, the beef is really good. Overall, the flavor is very on point. A lot of beefy taste, but this might be a little too rich even for me. This is the massive seafood tower. Lobster, scallops, calamari, dipping sauce. This is definitely very so typical bar food. Halo Halo is one of my favorite dessert items in the Philippines. It's just so incredibly refreshing because a lot of the foods here are very heavy. So this is the perfect food item to kind of balance everything out and it helps you eat more after you eat this. And this is so pretty, look at this. It's such a colorful dessert. Some ube in here. Looks like a flan as well. You know how like with Skittles you're supposed to taste a rainbow? Nah, this is tasting the rainbow right here. I'll get you this every single day. Next up, I'm gonna go grab some seafood, specifically tuna. And right now I'm at Marina Tuna, one of the best places to get tuna here. First thing I smell when I walk in, it's not tuna, it's Dorian. Why is there tuna cooked with Dorian? <laughs> That's the source of the aroma right here. Okay. So here, um, got four dishes. Really stepping out of my comfort zone with a couple of them. And the, the most uncomfortable dish, it, it's, it's arriving first. I'm very nervous about it. I never had it before. If you haven't figured it out, it's, it's a tuna eye. It's, it's a big tuna eye. This is the tuna eye soup. And oh, that, there we go. That's the eyeball right there. Oh, that's the whole eyeball. It's almost like a rotten post egg. Good Lord. And there's, looks like good chunks of tuna meat on the socket itself beside the eyeball. This is the tuna belly. And look, oh dang, that is juicy. Oh, good Lord. Look at all this juice oozing out of this piece of tuna. Mm. Tuna belly just oozing with juice. There's not a ton of spices in here. I feel like just a little bit of salt, some simple seasoning. The flavor of the tuna is able to be highlighted so well. Some parts of it is a little leaner than the other, but still, everywhere, tons of juice, and just that amazing, amazing tuna flavor. And this is the sizzling beef hood. This is the tuna eggs and fat, and it's on a sizzling plate. Look at this, oh wow. It has a couple different textures. The egg part is very crumbly. And then, and then the tissue that's kind of connecting them together is a little chewy. Overall, it, it's quite meaty. The taste is very mild. I feel like the calamansi juice should give it some life. Yeah, that woke this thing up. So this is the tuna bagaibai, and this is tuna sperm. It looks almost like chunks of chicken. The texture is kind of crunchy on the outside, and the inside is, is just really, really, really tender. And it has a sort of a bitterness to it as well. Again, that aside, it is very delicate and juicy, but for me, it's a bit too organy. So yeah, I think no more tuna sperm for me. Uh, the time I'm dreading has arrived. Tuna eyeball. I mean, wow, just, oh, so big. Oh, this thing's like intimidating me right now. The soup is a, it's a Senegal soup, it's a sour soup. It's very vinegary. I think that's gonna work in my favor because uh, when eating something like this, something vinegary really helps. God, I hope it helps. Huh, that is much, much better than I thought. It's not gooey. There's actually a lot of muscle in here almost. Okay, there's some gooeyness to it. All right, that was at the end. I didn't expect that. Oh, that goo was hiding in the muscles. But there is a lot of actual fish meat in the eyeball itself. Overall, 
Not bad, but really not my type of dish. My next two dishes have arrived and <sighs> so exciting. Check it out. Oh, this is just a massive tuna collar. Imagine having this collar around your neck every day. You just like lean down when you're hungry and munch on this. It smells so good. This is a tuna tail. It looks like a dinosaur tail. It's so pretty. The color, this is one of my favorite things to eat in the Philippines. I just never seen one this big. And love the char on the outside. Oh, that is a juicy collar. First up, a bite of the tuna collar. Just the most succulent, tender pieces of tuna you might ever have. I thought the tuna belly was gonna be the most tender and, and juicy thing. Nah, -uh. not by a mile. This collar, this is where it's at. And if you don't know, flip the tuna around on the backside, there's this piece right on like sort of the bottom of the collar. That's the best piece. Oh, look at that. Dip it a little bit in the sauce. Oh. Butter. And the tuna tail, I almost want to just like pick it up like a rib and gnaw on it. It smells so good. They fry the outside so it's nice and crispy. And you can see some of the scales are still there. Again, a little calamansi juice. Mmm. The scales actually become like sort of like a little crunchy tuna chip that you break through to get into this tender, juicy meat. The seasoning is really simple. So I think you actually need, need to make a little dipping sauce for this. So I'm thinking a little soy, a little vinegar, some chilies, splash of calamansi. Give the tuna tail a little dip. Heaven. Check it out, there's a little layer of fat between the meat and the skin. Eat it with a little bit of chili. That piece of fat right underneath the skin, that's just magical. But seriously guys, whenever you're in the Philippines, make sure you don't miss out on the opportunity to get yourself a nice tuna tail in a collar. After all the food today, I feel like I need something sweet. And this is a really, really popular um, restaurant. Hello. For dessert and also an unforgettable pork. I already have a lot of unforgettable foods in my mind right now, but what's one more? I need something sweet at this point. This is Sans Rivel. This is a very traditional Filipino dessert. It's basically cake with buttercream, cashews. And Sans Rivel, it comes from the French words without rival. So let's see about that. Oh man, I didn't expect that. I just realized this is meringue. No wonder it's so light. <laughs> this is actually really, 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 really good. It's not heavy. This is why one thing I hate about cake, especially I see something like this, I'm thinking it's gonna be heavy sitting in my stomach. Not at all, you're light as an angel. Mm. Couple more things. The calamansi cheesecake. And also the, the Dorian cheesecake. Calamansi cheesecake. It tastes sort of like a key lime pie, but much milder, not as tangy. Oh, that's good stuff. This fruit can do no wrong. It uplifts savory dishes, and it makes one heck of a cheesecake. Durian cheesecake. Me with durian is, once I'm used to the smell, it's really, really good. But that initial odor gets me every single time. This is the other thing I came here to try. The unforgettable pork. Let's see how unforgettable it truly is. First glance, it looks just like a regular piece of roast pork. A lot of sauce covering in it. It's very, very, very tender. It's actually a pork rib. So there's a bone in here. Really excellent piece of pork. Just not unforgettable. I think for me, the unforgettable pork experience is always gonna be the time with the Cebu, had my first taste of lechon. I think about that every single day. One last thing I need to eat today, since I am at the Dorian capital of the Philippines, gotta have a real fresh Dorian. And they chop one up for you, and you can eat it here. This is my friend Ali and Eros, by the way. And Dorian 
when it's not frozen and, and fresh, it actually smells quite nice. You know, sweet, creamy, what a hint of onions. Oh, this is strong. I mean, it's delicious, sweet, it's creamy, but even you guys think this is pretty pungent. Yeah. 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 Still, this is a perfect ending to an amazing food day here in Davao with the fruit the city is known for. It's really a fun experience exploring the city and getting to meet so many, so many incredibly kind people, which is like one of the primary reasons I love coming back to the Philippines. It's just people, people like these, these guys right here. Thank you guys so much for watching and to all those people watching the Philippines, love you guys. You are incredibly, incredibly sweet and awesome. Can't wait to see you again on my next trip. And of course, all the places I went to is listed in my description box below. Until we eat again, see you guys. Good morning. I'm leaving later today, but I just need to get one more meal in. And this is gonna be Filipino comfort food at Ricardo. Unfortunately, um, they only have breakfast items right now, which is a shame because I really, really wanted to try some of the seafood here. But they recommended the longanisa, which is a sausage. And I just can't leave here without getting another halo halo. The longanisa became one of my favorite things after I tried it for the first time in Pampanga. This thing is just so porky. Such an aromatic sausage. Dip in a little bit of the vinegar. Mm. Better than any breakfast sausage you'll find in the US. Deliciously porky sausage with creamy yolks surrounding it. This is the ultimate sausage and egg breakfast. All right, since I'm leaving the Philippines today, I figured one more for the road. Hmm. I don't care that it's like nine o'clock in the morning. One of the greatest, greatest things about growing up kids is you can eat shaved ice for breakfast. Also, by the time you guys are watching this video, I would have left the Philippines a long time ago. And I always get messages every time I upload a video asking if I could hang out or do a meetup at a local place. The videos are extremely delayed, unfortunately, because I can't edit when I'm traveling and it takes time to edit when I get back home. So the best way to know where I am in real time is to follow me on Instagram. All right, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. See you guys.